everyone and welcome to week six for essay writing for university so this is our mini lecture just giving you an overview of the key points and concepts for this week so as you can see there this week we uh, finished the work of module three reading research and referencing uh, and so you're going to be working towards finishing assignment two and uh, you we will be looking at the graphic organizer which you will complete as part of that assignment and perhaps most importantly introducing Harvard referencing and the use of the Harvard referencing guide so let's get started so if you think back to week five by now in terms of your progress towards finishing assignment two you should have uh, chosen your topic so decided whether you're going to be writing about volunteering or whether you're going to be writing about plastic bags and you should have read the two relevant resource material readings for your topic so I'll reinforce this again if you're doing the volunteering topic for assignment 2 you will be using readings 11 and reading 12 if you're doing the plastic bag topic you will be using readings 13 and 14 and uh, the goal by the end of week 5 in terms of this assignments progress was that you would have completed a notes TM for each of the readings on your cho chosen topic so those two notes TM whether it's for readings 11 and 12 or readings 13 and 14 are part of the assignment which you're going to submit at the end of this week so this week you're going to finish and submit the assignment and the next step is to uh, complete your graphic organizer and there's models and examples of graphic organizers both on Moodle and uh, in the study guide but basically we use the graphic organizer as a way of helping you plan your paragraph before you start to write so you might like to think of it as um, like a skeleton of your paragraph which then when you write it draft it in its full form you then flesh out into complete sentences etc so an effective gra graphic organizer will have a clear topic sentence and a clear concluding sentence and then the other part of the graphic organizer is where you list the prove it points which are going to make up the body of your paragraph now in the graphic organizer we don't expect that this is written out in full we are expecting to see note form point form um, of your prove it points and you should also be able to indicate next to each prove it point which reading you're going to use to support the prove it point so if you're doing the volunteering topic for your paragraph each of your prove it points will either come from reading 11 or reading 12 uh, and that helps you by doing that at the graphic organizer stage helps you then when you get to write the paragraph um, to know which reading you're using and then how to do the in-text reference um, so if you're in text doing an in-text reference for reading 11 it will be slightly different in form perhaps to the in-text reference for reading 12 because they're different kinds of resources and the same principle applies for readings 13 and 14 if you're doing the plastic bag topics topic so it's important that for the graphic organizer uh, just like you did for the notes TM download the template from Moodle from the assignment um, 2 section and use it to um, put your graphic organizer together so some of you may feel that this is a bit of a waste of time this step but it can make all the difference between uh, you coming up with a well-planned and uh, well uh, a paragraph that flows well and that makes sense and that is cohesive um, in comparison to a paragraph that's just a bit all over the place and doesn't follow the structure that we're looking for for the academic paragraph that same basic structure that we started with when you did assignment one of topic sentence or say it sentence body and concluding or clinch it sentence 
So there's a few things that you're going to have to get stuck into this week to finish assignment two. So once you've completed the graphic organizer, and that's probably, if you do that properly, the part of the assignment that should take you the longest because it's about you sorting out which points you want to use from the readings that you've done and which order you're going to put them in and developing your topic sentence and your concluding sentence. Once all that hard work's done, then you have your graphic organizer and use it to draft or write the first version of your paragraph. So you do that then and then you need to make sure that you've checked your in-text referencing. Um, firstly that you have fulfilled the requirements of the assessment that you have one information prominent in-text reference, one author prominent and one short direct quote. So that's only three in-text references. You will need more than that, but what we're saying there is they can't all be information prominent, they can't all be author prominent, and you should not have a paragraph that's littered with direct quotes. So there's got to be at least one of each of those things, but you might have three information prominent um, references, an author prominent and a direct quote. We might have two information prominent, two author prominent and a short direct quote. As long as there's one of each of them evident though, that is the most important thing. So if you have questions or concerns about that, you need to make sure you clarify that with your lecturer, whether it's whether you're an internal or a distant student. The other thing and this relates to what I've just been talking about is that you must be absolutely rigorous with the details of punctuation and formatting with your in-text referencing. So in academic writing, which is what we're doing here in um, this course, these aspects of your writing really matter. You will lose marks if those things are not correct and so that is why you need to use the Harvard referencing guide. So if you know that you're um, doing an in-text reference for a newspaper article with an author, you need to make sure that you have found the correct model for that type of resource in the Harvard referencing guide and that you are following it to the letter, applying the principles that it shows you there, the rules, to your in-text reference. Similarly, if you're using a document from the World Wide Web, if that's what it says your reading is, then you need to find that model in the Harvard Referencing Guide and you need to follow the principles of that for your in-text referencing. So um, with the Harvard Referencing Guide, it's not that you will memorize all these things, it's something that you will continually be consulting and looking up and checking um, when you're doing your academic writing such as you are in this paragraph. So that's all part of polishing your paragraph up. So you draft it, you know where the references are going to go, then you need to make sure that the details are correct. You also need to make sure that you're still writing in good complete sentences, that your other punctuation is correct, um, that the grammar is good, that the modality is appropriate, so it's um, low, fairly objective writing, just as you did in assignment one. Then you will need to put together your reference list, which will only have two um, resources in it. So if you have done the volunteering topic, you will have reading 11 and reading 12 correctly um, cited in your reference list and again you will follow the model in the Harvard Referencing Guide and the same thing for the plastic bags except your reference list should only show citations for reading 13 and reading 14. So again questions about those details you must uh, make sure you've asked your lecturer about them. Then you write your reflective response and you need to check that you have all the parts of the assignment completed and ready to submit. So this is in a number of places, it's in the study guide, it's on Moodle in the assessment to link, um, but if you have questions, if you just want to double check that you're handing everything in that you need to, please don't hesitate to contact us and ask. So in summary, 
what you might have gathered is that from now on the Harvard Referencing Guide is going to be your best friend in this course. So the skills that we're starting with in this uh, assignment two are going to carry on through uh, the rest of the course and you're going to use the Harvard Referencing Guide a lot. Um, make sure that you have followed the instructions and that you haven't missed anything. Ask those questions, it doesn't matter how big they are or how small. Um, and please work on getting the assignment in on time. We're halfway through the course now and it's not a good time to get behind schedule. So you need to make sure again that you're devoting the recommended number of hours to the course every week. Um, and if you're doing that, you will be able to stay on track and stay on schedule. So it's the end of week six at the end of this week and that means that you're halfway through this subject. So that is cause for congratulations. We look forward to receiving your second assignments um, and marking them and getting that feedback back to you. So all the best for a great week.